Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem design hash set. And of course we have to do it without any built in libraries. This is pretty similar to leak code 706 where we design a hash map. I've solved that question before and this one is slightly more simple. And we really are only implementing the most basic features of a hash set, adding a key, removing a key and checking if it contains a key. Now, of course, I'm sure you recall that hash sets cannot contain any duplicate values. That's not super hard to work around. Really the hardest part about implementing hash sets or hash maps is one, implementing the rehashing because just like dynamic arrays, hash maps and hash sets can grow in size. And we don't necessarily want to like start out the hash set with like a million spots available to us. But in the case of this problem, they tell us that I think we're only performing something like 10,000 insertions. So that's pretty much going to be the max size of our hash set. And that's not super large. So we can implement that. That's probably why this is an easy problem. I think implementing like a real hash set would be definitely a medium. And the second part about implementing this is how do we handle collisions? And I'm going to pretty much be handling them in the most simple way because I think that's usually sufficient for coding interviews. And that's using a technique called chaining, aka using a linked list. So now let's get into it. What's going to be the idea? Well, we're going to use an array because it's not like we can just invent new data structures. Usually we have to use like nodes or arrays to implement more advanced data structures. In this case, we're going to be using both. So our array, of course, can have an index, but the value of our array is going to be, in this case, a linked list node. And the reason we're doing that is because that's how we're going to handle collisions. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. Suppose the size goes from index zero all the way up until 9999, because that's 10,000. And let's say we're just inserting a key, because in the case of a hash set, all we do is care about the keys. We don't have a key value mapping. When we're given a key, and in this case, we're only given integers, which further simplifies this problem, we need to map that key to some index in our array. And the easiest way to do that is using the mod operator. We're going to take that key value, mod it by the size of our hash map, which again, in this case is 10,000. And when I say size of hash map, I meant the size of this array. So when you do that, we will never get a value that's larger than 9999. It'll either be from zero up until this number. So it will be in bounds. That's guaranteed. Even if we're given a number that's larger than 10,000, let's say we're given 10,001 and we mod that by 10,000. Well, we're going to get a value of one. So it'll map somewhere over here. Let's do that. So that key value here is going to map to this position. So we're going to create a linked list node in this position. Why are we doing that? Well, you'll see in just a second, I'm not going to fill in the value just yet, but now suppose we're inserting a new key value. Now we're inserting the key value one. And when we mod that by 10,000, notice how it goes in the same spot. It also maps to the one index. So we have a collision. How are we going to handle that? Well, there are many ways to do it. Another common way is open addressing. I talk about that in my course, if you're interested in that. And I also go into like details of how you can implement rehashing. But in our case, we're going to be doing it the more simple way. And that's by basically taking another linked list node and adding it to the end of this linked list. So this is really going to be a linked list connecting a bunch of nodes. And we could have multiple nodes here. Now, how do we distinguish between the fact that we also inserted a one and the fact that we also inserted 10,001. Well, pretty much just like I drew it on the linked list node, each node is going to have a key and the key is going to be the same key that we inserted. The reason this is important is because as you know, we don't want duplicates. So if now I try to add one again, it's going to hash to this position. And by the way, when we take that key value and mod it by the size of the array, that is basically our hashing function. It's a very simple one, but I'm sure you can imagine that there are more complicated ones that we can do. And in this position, we're going to then look at the linked list. We're going to try to add another linked list node with a one value. But why would we add two of them? We know hash sets can't contain duplicates. So there's no need to add the second one. As soon as we see that we've already inserted one here, we do not need to add it again. And of course, we will implement contains the same way. That's very important in a hash map. We want to know, does the value one exist? And we would find in our linked list, yes, it does. But if we asked another question, does 20,001 exist? 
list, it would map to the same index, but in our linked list here, we would see it does not exist. And same thing when we're talking about removing keys from our hash set, we're gonna go to the index that the key maps to and then find the linked list node. If it exists, we're gonna remove it. The way we're probably gonna remove it is by taking the previous pointer and updating it so that it points at the next pointer over here, which pretty much deletes this node. So you can see why this is a pretty straightforward way of implementing a hash set. What about the time complexity and the space complexity? Well, in theory, in average case, usually if the length of the array is a prime number, it helps to minimize collisions. And if we implement rehashing, where we dynamically increase the size of the array as it gets really filled up, like we wouldn't want to have too many collisions in a single spot. And as we add more and more values and keys to the hash set, we're going to have more and more collisions. So at some point, we're going to increase the size of the array. But of course, we're not implementing that. If we did implement it all correctly, we can be pretty close to constant time in the average case, not in the worst case, but usually in the average case, every operation in a hash set is pretty efficient. And in most cases, people will just assume even the worst case time complexity is constant, like for most interviews. In terms of memory complexity, of course, it's gonna be big O of N, where N is the number of keys that we have in our hash set. Technically, it's actually higher than that because we are pre-allocating the entire array, but I guess we could get technical and argue about whether this is constant size or big O of N, or maybe even bigger than that. But that's pretty much what I wanted to discuss. So now we can jump into the code. So you can see this is the definition that we're given. We need to implement these three. The first thing I'm gonna do is implement our constructor where we're just going to pre-allocate the memory, which is going to be an array in this case. And I want it to be of size 10 to the power of four because that's how many calls are gonna be made to add. So that's gonna be the maximum number of keys that we're probably gonna end up inserting. Technically, we could make it even smaller than this if we wanted to, but that would end up giving us more collisions potentially. So this is a pretty decent size to have it at. Instead of just initializing it to zero, I'm actually going to create a dummy node for every position in the array because that will make handling the edge cases a tiny bit easier. But believe it or not, this is a bug. A lot of people make this mistake. When you multiply an array like this, it'll basically copy this exact same value in every position. It's not gonna create a new list node for every position. It's gonna copy the same one. That's a bug and to fix it, Basically, we say this for i in range 10,000. So this will create a new list node for every position. And in this case, this is a dummy node. We're not gonna use it, but it's just gonna help us handle the edge cases a little bit better. So first thing I should probably do is define that class up above over here. And it's gonna be very simple. It's going to have a constructor that just takes in the key value and it sets two fields, one, the key of course, and second, the next pointer. And that should be sufficient. Now let's go ahead and implement the add function. And you're gonna see it's gonna be pretty similar to the next two as well. So the first thing we want to do given a key value is to hash it. And I could define a separate hash function down here, but since our hash function is so simple, I'm not gonna do that because I wanna save space and show you the entire code on like one screen. But I don't think it's a bad practice to have a separate hash function because that would make this design a little bit more extensible. So given the key, we want to mod that by the length of our hash set and that will give us the index that this key is going to map to and then with that index what we want to do is get the head of the linked list or what i'm going to call it is the current pointer so then we can get it by saying set at this index gives us the head and then we want to basically iterate to the end of that linked list to insert a new node with this key so we can go ahead and do that so while cur dot next is non-null because we want to skip the current node because we know it's a dummy node so we're always going to be referencing the next node and on each iteration we're going to say current is equal to current dot next continuing to shift until we get to the end of the linked list so this will stop when current is at the last node so at the last node we're going to say current dot next is equal to a new list node with the specified key value here. And then we can return and we don't really need to return anything, so I won't, but there's a slight bug. What about duplicate values? Well, if we detect a duplicate, we should probably just return immediately. We don't need to execute this part of the code. So here, before we shift our pointer, we can check if current.next.key 
is equal to the given key as a parameter, at that point, we just want to return. We don't need to do anything anymore. We detected the duplicate, so we can stop. And the reason I'm saying current.next key instead of just the current key is because again, we want to skip the dummy node. So that's pretty much the add function. Now I'm gonna clean it up a tiny bit. You can see that this index is always gonna be used right here. So I'm pretty much just going to cut that and move it down here just to save a little bit of space because pretty much we're gonna be copy and pasting this entire thing for the remove function and the contains function and just modifying a couple lines of code. At this point, I'm just gonna turn my brain off because I've done so many algorithm problems and just say, okay, we're gonna start at the current node. This time we want to remove the node so we don't need to do any type of insertion over here. And we only want to remove the node if it exists. So what we're gonna be doing is pretty much here looking for that key, except instead of returning here, before we do that, we probably want to just remove it. And like I said, we're gonna do that just by shifting the next pointer to the pointer after that. So we're gonna say current.next is equal to current.next.next, just like I kind of showed in the drawing explanation. Otherwise, we just wanna continue through the linked list. And once again, I'm gonna copy this into the next function. And this time we're looking for this key. So if we do find the key, instead of removing it, we probably just want to return true because we do need to return a Boolean this time. So let's return true if we find it. Otherwise, if we get to the end of this, then we can just return false. So not a lot of changes there. If you can implement one of these functions, you can pretty much implement the other two. And it just barely fits on one screen. So that's good. Now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And of course, there's a bug and it's not even with our hash set class. It's with the list node class. We probably want to set the next pointer not to next because it's not even defined yet. We can probably just set it to null initially. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you want to see a more detailed implementation, you can check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.